The world of Middle-earth is a very big place. Throughout our adventures, we may not always spot the little details held within it. This series is a love letter to the creators of Lord of the Rings Online and the man whose great works inspired it. Here are 10 things you may have missed in the Lone Lands. There is a debate among Tolkien scholars whether the Lone Lands and Eriador are one and the same. In Sindarin, Eriador is derived from area, which means lonely or isolated, and Dor, which means land. We see the first mention of the Lone Lands in the second chapter of The Hobbit, Roast Mutton. However, curiously, the mention of the Lone Lands was added in the second revision of The Hobbit in 1966, after the introduction of the word Eriador in The Fellowship of the Ring by Aragorn. It's not inconceivable that Tolkien intended the Lone Lands to indicate the entirety of Eriador. There is a hole in the roof of the Forsaken Inn that you can actually see both inside and out. Speaking of, the Forsaken Inn is called as such due to its inhabitants. The Eggline, which is the Sindarin name given to the inhabitants of Oscaruth, is derived of Eagle, which means one forsaken, and Ain, which means people. Thus, the Forsaken Inn is the Inn of the Forsaken People. Weathertop, or Amansul as it's known in Sindarin, is one of Middle-earth's most prominent and long-standing landmarks. It was first built in the days of Elendil to house a palantir within the kingdoms of Arnor, led by his sons. When King Irindor passed and his kingdom was split in three, the kingdoms Cardolan, Arthedain, and Rudar fought for control of the tower and the stone. The forces of Angmar eventually raised Amansul to the ground, but the palantir was safely transported to Furnas Terrain before the Witch King could claim it. As such, Weathertop, as it came to be known, was deserted and left empty for centuries. Well, until Gandalf Aragorn and some hobbits strode along. I'm sure everyone is aware of the stone Gandalf inscribed with his mark and a three indicating that he had been at Weathertop, but the amount of detail present is deeper than you think. Surrounding the stone are various patches of scorched earth. Often forgotten, Gandalf actually had a battle with the Ringwraiths upon Weathertop that was actually quite epic. Frodo unknowingly witnessed this while he was resting in the Midwater Marshes. As Frodo lay, tired but unable to close his eyes, it seemed to him that far away there came a light in the eastern sky. It flashed and faded many times. It was not the dawn, for that was still some hours off. A knife in the dark, Fellowship of the Ring. All lands east of Weathertop within the Lone Lands are unique to the Lord of the Rings Online. The Lone Lands are described as a wilderness with little to no inhabitants. That wouldn't make for a good MMORPG zone. That being said, Standing Stone Games, then Turbine, took great lengths to develop a lore so rooted in Tolkien mythos that it's easy to overlook. Radicus the Brown's inclusion in the epic book of the Lone Lands is due to his part in the War of the Ring. He departed from his dwelling in Mirkwood towards Bree in search of Gandalf on Saruman's suggestion. He encounters Gandalf near Bree and warns him of the Nazgul and to seek out Saruman. It's plausible that Radagast would have turned back towards Mirkwood only to stop at Oscaruth on the Great East Road to assist in matters there. Curiously, after the Council of Elrond, scouts were sent to various parts of Middle-earth and Radagast could not be found. His fate, outside of Lotro, remains unknown. Gartha Garwin, or Fortress of the Blood Maid in Sindarin, was conceived by Turbine from a history of bloodshed and war. As stated earlier, the three kingdoms Arthedain, Cardolan, and Rudar fought each other for control of Amansul. Naruhel, as she was then known, was a river daughter similar to Goldberry, Tom Bombadil's wife. The bloodshed spilled onto her waters and turned it red, corrupting her very essence. The men of Arthedain, who had sworn to protect Naruhel, were cursed by Tom Bombadil to forever haunt the lands. Gartha Garwin, like the Great Barrow, was once one very large dungeon before it was split in three. It used to be considered one of the harder dungeons, and definitely one of the longest in the game, and was seldom run on level. Northeast atop the Weather Hills, on the border of the Midgewater Marshes, stands a ruined fortress called Ost Alagos. Nearby, a group of hunters from Breland offer daily quests to this level 55 area full of white hand orcs. There is no breadcrumb to this area, nor does it serve any real purpose besides offering the dailies for gold and Bree rep. 
Hello everybody, the Bearded Minstrel here. Thank you very much for watching that video. I'm back. I'm looking forward to the new year and making a whole lot of fantastic Lord of the Rings themed content. Um, I just wanted to say that if you're interested in talking to me in-game, uh, I am on Landrable server and I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, character names right down here so that you can just uh, send me a tell and I'll help you out. See ya.